Hey everyone, in this Stardew Valley Beginner's Guide, I'm going to give you a starting guide to the game because it's a bit confusing what on earth you've got to do in this game initially. Uh, I've got a Let's Play series which walks you through the various stages of the game, but if you want to get up and running, this is what you do. So you come to the first screen here, select New down the bottom left hand side. And the first thing you need to do is create a character. Now the character, you can just hit the dice here if you want to have a randomized character. So if we did that, that would change our little character here. So we can see there, check it out. So you can just go through and have a little look if there's one that you like the look of. I'm hitting A to randomize, by the way, which would be X on the PlayStation. You should be able to figure that out for your buttons there. Uh, so just keep going through until you find something that you like the look of. Or if you want, you can change things down here. So we can change our gender from male to female here. We can change its skin color here. Uh, and I'm just using the left stick to move up and down. And then I can go through different hairstyles here, uh, different shirts and all sorts of stuff all the way through here. Uh, so lots of different things we can see, uh, various different accessories. Uh, on the right hand side, what we need to do is create a name so you can give your character whatever name. I'll just to do a short version of my online name here. The farm, bear in mind what it's going to do is put farm after it. So don't call it say cozy farm uh, in this box because it's going to add farm afterwards. So just call it cozy and then you can see to the right of there it says farm. So it's going to refer to this as cozy farm. Favorite thing you can put in whatever you like. So I'm going to put in a guitar. I like my guitar. It's, is it my favorite thing? I don't know but I like guitar, so that'll do. Uh, animal preference. This might refer to something in the game where you get a pet. I'm not sure whether it does or it doesn't, but if you're interested in that, pick whether you prefer a dog or a cat or whatever, and that may be what appears on your on your farm. I'm not sure, um, but yeah, it, I my farm, I had a dog appear, but I did pick my animal preference as dog. You can change the eye color, the hair color, and the pants color. You've got hue, which is the general color. Uh, you've got saturation, uh, so how deep that color is, how intense, and then the brightness of it. So you can see I'm adjusting the eyes of my character here. You can do the same thing with hair color, pants color. You can also choose to skip the intro, which I'm going to do in this case, because I don't want to spoil the game for you. Um, but that skips the whole intro sequence, uh, which can be quite nice. The other thing we've got on the right hand side here are different types of farms. So you can go with a standard farm, which I recommend for beginners, or if you're interested in more water around your farm, you go for the Riverland farm. And you can see here, it tells you a little bit about each of these as we go through. So uh, all these sorts of things here. So lots of stuff here. But if it's your first time, I suggest you just go with a standard farm and you'll probably have another go at it at some point. Lastly, on the left hand side, there are some additional settings you can have a little look at. Generally, you can leave these alone though, but you can see uh, some information here. Uh, so you can see here, um, you got, can check that you can complete the year one, spawn monsters, blah, 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 lots of stuff here. None of which I think is that important. So I would just leave that well alone. When you're ready, hit OK and the game will start. Now, of course, we're going to skip right past the first uh, sort of intro. And you can see the game gives me some hints on the left hand side what to do. So I've got move and then check for A. Uh, and you should see different options there for your character. So as I come out here, there's a little present. I move up to it and press A. And that's going to give me something. And you can see down the bottom left hand side, it says parsnip seeds. You received 15 parsnip seeds. Here's a little something to get you started. Mayor Lewis. Nice. So A again, we'll get rid of that. Now you've got this little pointer that you can control with your right stick. And on the top bar here, if I just move my pointer just so we can see, you can see the tools that we start with. We've got an ax, which is used to chop wood, hoe used to dig and till soil, a watering can used to water crops. It can be refilled at any water source, a pickaxe to break stones, a scythe, which can cut grass into hay if you've built a silo, and the parsnip seeds that we just picked up. So as well as that, we've also got a couple of other controls that we've got, and these will vary from platform to platform, but on the Xbox, what I'm on, if I hit the screens button on my controller, I get access to the journal. If you're on the PC, you'll have to look at what it is. Uh, so we're go getting started. If you want to become a part farmer, you have to start with the basics. Use your hoe to till the soil, then use a seed packet on the tilled soil to sow a crop. Water every day until the crop is ready for harvest. Cultivate and harvest a parsnip. You've then got introductions. It would be a nice gesture to introduce yourself around town. Some people might be anxious to meet the new farmer. So you can see there's a total of 28 people that you need to, or you don't need to, but you can 
find in Stardew Valley. You can see we found two already from the introduction that I skipped, um, but you get the idea there. And then I'm using B to exit out of there. So I can also use B on my controller to access this sub menu here, uh, or also my menu button. Uh, and then we've got these different tabs. We've got the inventory, the skills, the social, the map, crafting, collections, options, and exit game. So the inventory is showing our stuff here. And initially you only have this first bank of areas that you can store stuff in. Later on, you can buy additional slots, as it were, or bars of slots. So we can have a second bar and a third bar uh, by buying those from a shop in the local town, which we'll talk about in a minute. You can also see, we can see our current funds and our total earnings. If we move over to the skills, we can see how skilled we are in these different things. So we've got farming, mining, foraging, fishing, and combat. And these will increase as we progress in the game and our, our experience increases by doing each of these activities. Over to next to this, we've got the social tab, which is basically your relationship with each of the characters that you find. So you can see we've got characters here we haven't discovered, but we can also talk to these, give them gifts, and that will improve our rating with each of them. You've then got the map. So the map shows our farm area here, uh, and then all of these different things, including the local town, which we've got over here, which we can explore. And you'll be going forwards and backwards from your farm over to here quite regularly to buy supplies and also to sell some of your goods during the day. So we've got that. Uh, sorry, I've skipped out of there. We've also got on here the crafting menu. So these are things that we can craft and as our experience gains uh, and we do more stuff, we will get access to more things that we can actually build. So that's our crafting thing there. I'll try and show you a bit of that in a minute. You then got collections. So there's various different things. We've got fish and artifacts, minerals, cooking, letters, and you'll get different ones of these as you progress through the game or whether you dig things up in the woods and stuff like that. You've got your options, so you've got some various different controls here that you can uh, adjust here. Nothing here that's too exciting, but you know you can turn things off like the controller vibration. If that annoys you, you can lower the zoom level, you can turn off backgrounds and lower the music and all that sort of stuff. Um, and lastly, we can exit the game and it's here where we could go back to the title, but I don't want to do that. So we're currently sitting inside our little home here and you can see we can turn on the telly uh, see the weather report and this will tell you what's going on the weather for tomorrow is going to be a beautiful sunny day tomorrow so we're good for our farm in here i've got a little table and chairs you can sit down on but nothing too exciting and you can light the fire there now your home can get more impressive over time so we'll talk about that a little bit later so as we come out to this area we've got the use tool on the left hand side so x is use tool but you can see i've got nothing selected now rb uh, sorry, RT will flick me between the different tools that I've got here. So you can see as I go through, uh, we've got access to different ones of these. Uh, and then the X will use that tool that I've got highlighted. So the X here is chopping through that stuff there. Uh, we could also try the scythe and that will give us some fiber from those things. So generally, if you use the right tool for the job, you will get a better drop. Uh, so this one is cutting down these and we're collecting this fiber. Uh, we've then got the axe is funny enough going to be good for wood so you can see I can't cut through with the scythe here but if I go with the axe uh, we can chop that there and all is good and we're collecting a bit of wood. So the other one that we've got here we've got a hoe and we've also got a pickaxe. Now pickaxe you can see uh, funny enough pick stuff but for stone and basically what we've got here this farm area is all of ours to plant our crops and farm away on and you know, earn our crust in the day. And the idea being that the more farmland you clear, the more stuff you can plant, the more stuff you plant, the more money you can make, etc., etc. So your first sort of job is to start clearing some of this stuff out. Uh, and then from there you can progress and sort of plant stuff. And we're gonna do some of that. So I'm just gonna clear some of this just so we can have a little look at the other tool that we've not really used it, which is the hoe. Uh, and we'll just chop this here. One of the things to keep an eye on though is your energy. And if you look down the bottom right hand side, there's a little green bar that says E, uh, and that will deplenish as you do stuff. So you can see as I'm chopping, that energy bar is dropping. And if that drops to nothing, you can be, uh, you can basically just faint. So you wanna keep an eye on that. Up the top right hand side, you also wanna be keeping an eye on the time of day. So you can see it's 10, 20 a.m. You generally want to be finishing up towards the evening and then go back to bed uh, so you don't get too tired uh, and then the next day will start. So 
we've got this all clear now. We've got some stuff collected and you can see our bar is pretty full already. But let's use that other tool that we haven't used, which is the hoe, which is this one uh, down the bottom in the middle there. And then if we use this, we'll start creating an area. We're tilling the land here uh, so we can plant our seeds. So um, you can do this however you see fit. Um, you'll see different tutorials out there saying, you know, do nice big square plots or, and only plant certain seeds in here. That's entirely up to you how you do it um, and, you know, how you want to organize your farm. One of the things I missed straight away is if you make a mistake and you want to fill some of this in, what you can do is go to your pickaxe and then select that and then you can fill some of this in like you can see here. So that's well worth knowing because I totally missed that the first time I played Stardew Valley. So we'll do that. That's all good. And uh, now I've got this little square plot. So if I go over to my seeds, so I'm using a uh, left trigger to go over to the seeds and then X to plant these. So that'd be square on the PlayStation. Uh, and you can see that the, the seeds are planted in place nice and easily. Now, the other thing you can see on the top right is Monday one. So that's the current day. Uh, and it, it, basically, funny enough, that progresses as we go through. And each season has 28 days. So you wanna be planting stuff in each season and the stuff you plant varies from season to season. Now, one of the things to be careful of is if you get to the end of the season and your plants haven't finished growing, they all die when the season changes. So you wanna make sure everything is fully grown once you've done that. So the other thing we've got here is the watering can. And if I grab that and then again use the X command, I'll water the seeds. And you need to be doing this daily unless it rains. Uh, and this will help your plants grow. Now the parsnips we've got here are a starting crop. They're very easy to grow. It will take four days for these to grow as long as you water them. And then you can pick them up and all is good. So we've planted our 15 seeds there and we've got these other things that we've got. So we've collected some wood and some stone. And these are generally useful for other bits and bobs in the game. So if we have a little look at our crafting menu, for example, you can see I can now build some of these. I could build a wood fence. I could build a gate a chest, torch, wood sign, stone sign, wood path, gravel path, cobblestone path, and campfire. So the more stuff you build, generally the better. The other thing you wanna be keeping an eye on are these to try and get these sorted. So you can see cultivate and harvest a parsnip. If we can do that, we will earn a reward. Uh, so it's worth keeping an eye on those as well. Now, as you collect stuff, you can either dump it in this box to sell. So if we select this, uh, with A, I can chuck stuff in here that I don't want and then I will get money at the end of the day if I want to do that um, or I can keep it. Now one of the things that you will probably want to get is um, lots of wood. So if we keep chopping the woods, that's going to help us as we progress because we can build things like a chest to store stuff in. So that's one thing, but I'm keeping an eye on that energy there because I've got lots to do. Now, if we go to the right, what we can also do is explore the local area and you will find things of interest such as this here. And if you find something of interest, simply go up to it and you can use the X command or square on the PlayStation to collect it. And you're looking for things that look a little out of the ordinary, such as this leak here. Certain things you can also eat. But so you can see my inventory is now full, but let's eat that leak. So I'll go over to it here. I'll select A and say, eat the leak. And that's going to give me a little bit of energy and you can see my energy increased by 40 energy there i've also now got a full bar of inventory so i need to be careful about what i've got here because uh, i need to clear some of this stuff and one option is to sell that to someone and the main shop that you can go to initially is over here pierre's and if we have a little look in here it says welcome to pierre's that's the backpack you can buy which will increase your inventory slots over time but if you go up to Pierre and press A, you've got options to buy seeds. Uh, we can also sell stuff to Pierre that is not grayed out. So he would give us 30 for this daffodil, but we could give that as a gift to someone. Uh, he would also give us 30 for this dandelion. So it's entirely up to you whether you want to sell any of this stuff or not. Um, in this case, I'm going to because I want to buy a few more seeds. So you can see parsnip seeds here are 20 a piece. They will take four days to mature. And I think Pierre buys them at 40 a piece. So you can double your money on them. And there are all sorts of different seeds that you can buy, but some are more expensive than others. But potatoes, for example, are a good way to earn some money. So 
uh, we could buy various ones but we need to be careful of our inventory that we actually have spare slots for some of these so we could sell this for example the daffodil um, and I will buy some of these so we'll buy some of these uh, and we'll also buy some potato seeds. You can see potato seeds are very expensive though. So I've spent all my money straight away. <laughs> uh, so we'll come out of here and then I need to go back and think about planting those. Uh, but you can see my inventory is now full. So even though there's something here I could collect, uh, I'm not going to. Um, but there's other people we can go and see here and you will see that objective we had of meeting new people. Uh, will improve but you can see the doctor is only open 9 till 3 p.m. so that one's useless but as you walk about town you'll find other sorts of people as well so there's some people down here uh, hello you must be GM the new farmer I'm Caroline uh, this one uh, and each of these you can opt to give a gift to if you want if you've got a gift and you'll improve your um, sort of standing with them um, but if we have a little look at that objective that we had, which was, which one was it? Uh, it's the introductions. We've now met five of the people and we just keep going and try and meet them all. And some of them will give you little objectives and bits and bobs like that. So all sorts of stuff uh, that we can do. So we can see our day is a flying pass. We're at 4.20 p.m. Uh, and although there isn't much to explore, we should think about finishing off our planting here um and get that underway so remember the, the uh parsnips that we've got are going to take a few days to mature four days and the potato is going to take even longer so we could set these up so i will plant another one here and then i'll do a bit more uh tilling so i'll use this tool and i'll plant some more here and initially you know this is not a big problem if you make a bit of a mess and there's no you know super wrong way to do this it's entirely up to you how you want to lay your farm out but generally I personally think a good idea is to just try and have little banks of the same item just to make it a little easier for you to figure out what you've got planted where uh, so we'll just do that there and we'll plant some more stuff so I'm going to plant the potatoes this time so this is going to be my potato plot uh, and it would be nice to have more potatoes but I can't afford them so we will uh, water these. Whoops, I missed. And the other thing that you can see is that the watering can in the bar down the bottom uh, is going down as we water stuff. So the, to refill that, you need to have access to water. And on the starting farm, there is a little sort of pot over here that you can grab water from. So you can see when I go up to that and I hit the x command there it fills up the watering can and then we can carry on planting stuff here so i could do another little plot over here for example uh so or maybe i uh, don't want to go that way let's go this way so i'm keeping an eye on that energy so it's getting late uh but i would quite like to plant these parsnips just before we finish up so we'll do that so we'll do that and uh just till this little bit like so and you can see this soon gets easier as you understand the controls. There's a whapping big tree there. There we go, 7, 10 p.m. So you can see things are getting darker on the farm. And we're gonna to need to go to bed fairly soon because we're not gonna be able to see much anyway, but we've got this area sorted. Then I just need to water this before we go to bed as well. There we go. So we'll water this and then I'll show you the mechanic for selling stuff that Pierre won't buy or some of the shops because you can chuck that in before you go to bed and then you'll get a bit of money for those things so you can see we're really tired now so we need to be careful uh, and I've also out of food so it's a little bit dangerous here I've done too much work but I'm trying to show you stuff so we can go here and say we want to get rid of some of this stuff generally the resources you want to keep but I just want to show you how you would sell these so we'll sell this bit of clay this bit of coal and this stone and this wood and this fiber. Uh, and what that's gonna give us is a bit of money. So we'll go okay. And then we'll go to bed. So we're moving to the house, press A to select. Whoops, sorry, I went in and out there. Uh, we'll go to here, go to sleep for the night. Yes, and we are on day one. And the stuff that we chucked in there, you can see that we got a little bit of money for. So we got 
105 G for those bits that we chucked in. Uh, we didn't earn anything from farming or foraging or fishing because we didn't make any of those and chuck them in the box. But you get the idea there. So day one of spring, that's what we made. We then moved to day two. So remember, each of these has to, uh, 28 days each of the seasons. So we're still in spring. Uh, we get full bank of energy again, thankfully here. And then we're ready for our next day. And what we should see is our little saplings grew, but I forgot to water this one here, which is why this still shows as a seed. So your first job is just to sort these out a little bit. Uh, now, of course, the problem that you're going to have as you go forwards is if you've spent all your money, you've got no money to buy more stuff. So you'll probably spend your first days just exploring around and picking stuff out, discovering things. Uh, but make sure you keep working on your farm and, you know, watering everything as you progress. Uh, and that's how you will make some decent money. Um, and in terms of those resources that we get from chopping down trees and stuff, uh, you want to be saving some of those up for those big crafting moments. Um, and then you get more useful stuff. I will cover a couple more bits before we finish this off um, and help you with a couple of other confusing areas of the game. So I missed a seed there before. So on a daily basis, you will typically get some mail to your mailbox as well. And we'll have a little look at that here. Just got back from a fishing trip. You should come by the beach sometime. I've got something for you. So I will show you this because fishing is very confusing initially. So we will go and do that uh, and talk about that. But you know the basics of farming on your farm now. And we'll go and see Willie at the farm. Uh, sorry, at the beach. We'll go this way. And you can't really get in trouble with any of the houses as far as I'm aware. There's also a notice board here that might tell you some info as well. So you can see what's coming up on the calendar. So that's where we are at the minute. We can see Lewis's birthday's on the 7th. So we can go and say happy birthday to him on there. You can also see the egg festival, which is coming up. And that's uh, somewhere where you can buy some special stuff like strawberries and things. Um, but your main objective really initially is to meet people, make money, that sort of stuff. So we will go and see it, Willie, because one of the things that is very good initially when you've got limited funds is fishing, because fishing can earn you some reasonable money. So we'll go down to the beach. This is Willie over here, and he will tell us a little bit about fishing. Not a lot. <laughs> so I'll just skip past that, because it's just really the, the fishing mechanics that I want to show you. Come on, Willie, give me the fishing rod. Thank you, my friend. Now, fishing totally confused me to begin with, so I'm going to show you how this works. Let me just get all past that. And you can see now we are free to move around. That little scene will end. Uh, and then we are free to do a bit of fishing. So you want to equip your fishing rod. So it's right there on the right hand side. And then you hold the X command to do a cast. And then what will happen is you're waiting for that little exclamation mark. And then you get this little fish indicator. And you've got to try and keep the fish in the little green bar on the uh, sort of in the middle by pressing the X command. If you hold it down and go right the way to the top, it's, you know, little presses and you will catch a fish like we saw there. Um, so we'll do another one. I'll just show you that again. So the longer I hold X initially or square on the PlayStation, the further that will go out. I'm saying on the PlayStation. I don't even know if this is on the PlayStation. I would assume so. So we're waiting for the exclamation mark. Here it comes. He says. <laughs> there we go. So I've pressed it there. And if it's sitting at the bottom, then you can just wait there. But that green bar on the right-hand side needs to get all the way to the top. And if the fish is outside the little green bar that you've got, then you will uh, lose the fish. So if the, the big green bar on the right-hand side drops to nothing. So if we go in here, this is where we can sell fish. So you can see if we go here, just like with Pierre, we can go and sell our fish here. You can also eat these fish. 
So you can see we've made 80G straight away there. And if you're struggling with that particular pole, there is a simpler one, which is this training rod here, which will give you a bigger bar that you can use, but you can't catch as good sets of fish. But if we sell both of these to Willy, uh, we are all good. Willy also sells other things as well, like bait later on as you progress your fishing. But like many things in the game, the more you do of something, the better you will get at it. Um, but that is a little bit of fishing like we've seen there. Um, so the early parts of the game, you want to be looking at that. It's also worth exploring areas like this beach here. So you will find things, whoops, not that, uh, such as these. And you can sell these to Willy as well. And if you see little wiggly worms like this from time to time, this is a useful area to dig up. So get your hoe and you will typically find something like this lost book. And you can take that to the museum and, and uh, the more of these you find, the more rewards you will get. So I will just show you that as well. So the museum is off over this way. here except it's not open today uh 8 a.m to 6 p.m uh, i don't understand why it's not open yes it is open i just hit the sign sorry so there's these books here missing books so if we talk to gunther here um sometimes he may say he needs it but we've dropped that book there so that's all sorted now but also if you find things with the worms, sometimes you'll find something interesting and you can give them to Gunther and the more you get, the more stuff you will get. Um, so this is a place where you can upgrade your uh, sort of tools over time, but it's quite expensive. So this guy here, um, so he can upgrade your tools and you can see here. So this will enable you to chop down bigger things like bigger trees. Um, this one is uh, can be refilled at any water source. Um, used to break bigger stones that sort of stuff so you can upgrade that also if you get geos which are things that you find with the worms sometimes they look like a, a bit of an egg uh, you can sort of use them or rather get the blacksmith to break them open for you there uh, so that's all good really i'm um, just trying to think whether there's anything else i want to give you in this beginner's guide to get you up and running um, the storyline will progress automatically uh, and it will tell you what to do so you get more objectives appear over time um, but that is the basics, I think, of the game. So hopefully that gives you enough to get started. Uh, so you want to be just doing a bit of fishing initially, planting, etc., etc. Keep an eye on that energy um, and keep clearing your farm. And then you may discover more things as you clear the farm as well. And you want to be pr progressing and planting as much stuff as you possibly can uh, to maximize your money and clearing all of this stuff. So we'd go back to here. We'd keep clearing like this and occasionally you may find some more stuff um, on your farm that you can uh, you know dig up and use i should probably just quickly show you crafting as well so we'll just craft something very simple so we'll just put the pause button on and go over to cra where is crafting i've lost it uh where the heck is it uh, it's not there what the heck? Where is it? Oh, I'm in the wrong. Oh, no, that was it. Sorry. It's that one. So these are the things, but because I've got no stuff, that's why I was going past it. I need to collect some stuff because I just remembered I sold it all, didn't I? So if we grab a bit of uh, wood. Like that. And then we'll just show you that crafting process just so you can see going on uh, one of the things you want to be crafting as soon as you can it will cost you 50 wood which i'm not going to have time to do this time um, but in that crafting menu uh, where is it this the chest which will require you 50 wood and then you can store lots of items in there but uh, i've got enough to make a wood fence and also i've got enough to make a cobblestone path so each time, the problem I've got is my inventory is full. Uh, so now I've got a bit of a trouble because I can't store this anywhere. I'm going to have to bin something. Uh, so I don't really want to bin anything really. That's quite annoying. Uh, so yeah, you want to be careful of that because otherwise you waste a bit like that. But at least we've got a bit of cobblestone there that we can now lay. 
So we put that on the floor there and that's how we do it. But that's why you want the chest first so you don't have to keep wasting things uh, and then just progress from there. So I hope that beginner's guide was useful too. I appreciate that it was a lot of information, but hopefully it helped out. If it did, give us a thumbs up, please. Much appreciate any comments, welcome. I'll see you again in another video. Anything that you stuck on in Stardew Valley, do let me know. Cheers.